Right, so in this video, I want to look at the concept of back titrations. Now, back titrations is a, a basic application of titrations. It could be quite challenging the first time to envision what is actually meant by the steps. <clears throat> but in principle, it's the same as titrations and then <clears throat> mole ratios from there. So back titration sometimes is called an indirect titration and usually it consists of two steps. You have some unknown react or reactant of unknown concentration that you react with an excess of something. So let's say for example you have some ammonia and you add more than enough HCl to react with it, like a large excess amount. And then you titrate the, the solution to determine how much HCl was there in excess. And then once you know that, you actually know how much HCl reacted, and then you can calculate the information backwards. So that's what it means. Um, the best analogy I could think of is, let's say, for example, you want to buy milk, but you don't know what the price is of the milk. It's nowhere on the shelf. And you have social anxiety, so you're not going to ask the cashier. So what happens is you get to the till, you put down your milk, they ring it up, and you're like, okay, well, I don't know what the, the amount of money is that I need to pay, but I'm going to pay an excess amount. So you give her or them, um, you give a thousand rand. They take the thousand rand, they do the transaction, and they give you back a certain amount of money. You then need to count the money, in other words, perform a titration, count the money to know that, okay, well, I got 950 rand back. So then immediately, you know, the information is that the milk must have cost 50 rand. And then there's a relationship between milk and 50 rand. So 50 rand buys one milk. So you can figure it out. Then it's like a mole ratio that you had there. So then you know how much money you had to spend to get one milk. It's, it's kind of something like that. Um, so you take information that you get <clears throat> from performing another task and you use it to determine what you wanted in the first place. So these techniques or this back titration idea is quite useful um, when your reactants are volatile. So in other words, they easily become a gas and they're now in solution, but it's difficult to work with. You have some insoluble salts that are acids or bases like calcium carbonate. A reaction is too slow or you have a weak acid and a weak base titration, which is difficult to monitor um, with an indicator. So, I mean, some, some situation like this. All right. so the first example that I want to look at is one where you typically have a volatile substance like ammonia. And we want to determine its concentration in a commercially uh, available cleaning solution, so something like bleach or whatnot. <clears throat> so what the student first does, it says they take 25 milliliter of this solution and put it in a conical flask, a 250 milliliter conical flask. But remember, it's only 25 milliliter of that solution that's placed in the conical flask. Then to that, they add 50 milliliter of a known concentration acid and it's reacted with the ammonia solution. So that's the part where we add the excess reagent. So there's more than enough HCl to react with whatever there is um, in the 25 milliliter, but we don't know what the 25 milliliter is. What we do know is how much HCl we added, and that excess HCl is then reacted with sodium carbonate. And we know that, and that is done through a titration so that we can monitor how much sodium carbonate we've added. So then we're added whilst to calculate the concentration of the ammonia. So let's look at what happened here. So we take our volumetric flask. Is there? It is a 250 milliliter flask, but you'll see that's kind of irrelevant information. That just gives us an idea that there's enough volume for everything here to happen. A pipette. I wonder if I can draw a pipette is taken and 25 milliliter of the ammonia is added. So from the pipette, we add into this thing 
we had 25 milliliter of NH3. Right. <clears throat> we also add to this, subsequently, we add 50 milliliter. I'm just dropping all the significant figures for ease. Of a 0 0.1 molar solution of HCl. All right. We don't worry about the current volume because all that we're interested is in is how much HCl did we add and how much of it is too much. That's what we do. We then take this solution. So now we have a solution where we have our volumetric flask and there's some reaction that has taken place with the ammonia and the HCl. So there's some stuff in here. But importantly, there is excess HCl here. And what we then do is we have a titration. So you have your birette. And in the birette, come on, you had 0 0.05 molar and you added 21.50 milliliter of sodium carbonate. Right. So the question is, what do we do? So like, how do we work this thing backwards? Well, the right hand side, you first look at it as a normal titration. We're told we have a base with a certain concentration and we added a certain amount of it. And we're interested in the acids concentration at the bottom. Once we've gotten that, or the no amount of acid at the bottom. So once we've gotten that, then we can start working it backwards. So that's where we start with. We want to know how much is this excess, excess HCl. So our first starting point is always to write the chemical equation. So the chemical equation of this <clears throat> titration reaction will then be, we have HCl in the aqueous state reacting with sodium carbonate also in the aqueous state to form well sodium chloride because it's an exchange reaction plus CO2 because it's also gas forming and water Remember, if you add a strong acid, or a strong acid reacts with a base that contains carbonate, then you will form a gas. All right. Now we balance this. We have two sodiums, so we need at least two there. That means we get a two there. There's two hydrogens, all the oxygens are balanced. All right. So that is our, of course, this is an aqueous. It's not important, but, you know, for for completeness. <clears throat> That's our balanced reaction equation. So what we want to do now is we want to determine the number of moles of this thing and then that can imply for us the number of moles of that thing. Okay. So how do we calculate the number of moles of the sodium carbonate? We, of course, take the concentration multiplied by the volume. So it's concentration, sodium carbonate, times the volume of the solution. And that's added. So in other words, we have 0 0.05 mole per liter multiplied by 21.50 milliliter, but that is of course times 10 to the negative three liter. And from that you should get 1.075 times 10 to the negative three mole. Right. So now we know the amount of mole of sodium carbonate 
added to reach the end point in this titration, then we can write. So our balanced chemical equation for the titration tells us that one mole of the sodium carbonate reacts with two mole. Two mole HCl. Therefore, <clears throat> 1.075 times 10 to the negative 3 mole sodium carbonate will react twice that amount of HCl. So 12 times 1.075 10 to the negative 3 which gives you a value of 2.150 times 10 to the negative 3. Of course there's some other numbers there as well. Mole HCl. Okay, so let's call this the number of mole of HCl titrated. All right, so we just can distinguish later on. So, what is the amount of excess HCl? Well, we first need to say how much HCl was added. So the amount of mole of HCl that was added in the beginning is also equal to the concentration times the volume. Concentration was 0 0.1. The volume was 50. This, of course, gives a value of 5 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. So that's how much was added. And now the question is, how much, how many moles um, reacted with the ammonia? So if we have the total amount, total number of moles, then, uh, so in other words, added is the total number. We have the amount that was unreacted, in other words, the amount that was titrated. So then to calculate the number of moles that reacted with ammonia, so NHCl reacted, is then equal to NHCl added not equals minus NHCl um, titrated. which we should can get a value of 2.85 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. Okay, so now we know how much HCl reacted with ammonia. So how can we use that information to determine the amount of ammonia? Well, as always, we need a chemical equation to do that. So if HCl reacts with ammonia, it will be in the aqueous state, aqueous state. This will form, I mean, we know it technically forms a lot of other stuff, but this will form NH4Cl. 
and you can't really do anything else here so the acid will protonate that so technically you get NH4 plus and Cl minus but it's all the same and we see it's immediately balanced so that is a balanced reaction equation <clears throat> So it means ammonia and HCl reacts in a one-to-one -one fashion. Um, okay, so I'm really not going to write that out again. So I'm going to say this reacts one-to-one one with each other. That means the number of mole of ammonia is equal to this NHCl reacted. is equal to the 2.85 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. Okay. Now you know how much H, how much ammonia reacted. So in principle, we're asked to calculate the concentration. So we need to use this information somehow um, to get the concentration. And the biggest question that you should have now is, all right, so how do we calculate concentration? Concentration of ammonia is equal to number of moles of ammonia divided by the volume of the solution. The question is, what is the volume of solution? We know the number of moles, so that's easy. 2.85 times 10 to the negative 3 mole. Divided by what is the volume? <clears throat> is the volume 75? Is the volume 250 milliliter? No. The volume is 25 milliliter because where was the only place that the ammonia was present at the way beginning? It was present in the 25 milliliter that we added. We then added a lot of volume and whatnot, but that doesn't change the intrinsic amount of ammonia that was there in the beginning. Um, and also the volume that it was added with in the beginning. So this is then 25.0 times 10 to the negative 3 liter. Negative 3s will cancel and you will get a value of 0 0.114 mole per liter, in other words 0 0.114 molar. And then you write, therefore the concentration <clears throat> of ammonia in H3 in the cloudy solution is 0 0.114 molar because that answers the question and just ending with c in h3 it's not really is the answer but it's not the full answer okay so i think the important thing here is to remember that there's a titration that happens at the end so at the back and then we use that information to calculate something in the opposite direction so backwards like so that's what the words mean backward titration Okay, I'll do another example of this, <clears throat> which will be the same concept, and then I hope you've, you've grasped it. All right, thank you for watching.